<coughs> bacterial meningitis have been going along saying that this species doesn't have a primary bacterial meningitis. Now we do. Uh, cattle do have at least two forms of bacterial meningitis that are bacterial. Listeriosis is one I've, I've seen not uncommonly. It's usually a disease associated with feeding improper uh, fermented silage. So when they, they make silage, usually corn, sometimes sorghum, uh, this is packed in pits or silos very tightly so that you force all the air out and create an anaerobic environment. And that anaerobic environment is necessary for the fermentation and uh, to occur, and the fermentation is what keeps it from spoiling. If you get an improperly packed silage pit or um, improperly packed uh, silo tower, uh, then you don't get proper fermentation, and listeria has an affinity to grow in that environment. So listeriosis is primarily a disease of cattle that have been fed silage uh, improperly in silage. silage. Uh, they show it <coughs> as um, circling, head pressing, which is probably a headache, uh, is a very common sign. And uh, it depends on the progression of the disease. I've had the few cases I've seen, I've, I have had good luck with high dose uh, penicillin G in this. This is one of those where we uh, seem to be able to break down the blood-brain barrier and use this, and there are your doses. Again, I don't expect you to know doses, but you should know high dose, okay? So the, the clostridial diseases and meningitis are two where I'll use pretty high doses of uh, penicillin G. Oxytet is uh, also in the literature as being effective and technically fluorophenicol is used. The other two historically have been used much more commonly, but fluorophenicol would work. The other primary bacterial meningitis in cattle is thromboembolic meningoencephalitis due to uh, Histophilus somnus. And it's uh, mixed in with the respiratory diseases. So uh, occasionally instead of the pneumonia form, you'll find TEME, uh, again, more of a feedlot disease. And this is uh, unfortunately usually a post-mortem find. Uh, oftentimes you don't get to these in time to actually treat the active animal. But if, if you were uh, trying to treat it, then fluorophenicol would be uh, effective. Now in uh, baby calves, we see meningitis sometimes. And usually this is from uh, septicemia from some other uh, foci. In that regard, they're a lot like horses and dogs. Uh, <coughs> so oftentimes we get an umbilical infection. Again, the calf in a dirty environment or there's not a, a farmer. Most dairy farmers are going to be out there with a little tincture of iodine dipping the navel uh, shortly after birth to keep down umbilical infections. But either they don't get to it uh, or it's a beef cow operation and they're in a wet environment uh, <coughs> even though they're in a pasture and they get an umbilical infection and that spreads. So <coughs> again, fluorophenicol. We don't have a lot that we can use uh, in cattle compared to small animals. Yes, you could use the same things if there's not a prohibition, but typically you're not gonna use a third generation cephalosporin in a calf or that sort of thing. So fluorophenicol would be a good choice here.